you know, how do you change a culture? And I think that single-handedly trying to change a culture is really hard and it's actually a losing battle. I was thinking about a time when I was on a team and it was a pretty dysfunctional team, to be honest. And so I started trying all these tricks. I started trying all these tools to try to fix it. So I said, hey, let's use this neat communication tool to, to try to you know, make sure that we have open flows of information. And um, you know, let's try having weekly conference calls with agendas because this was a virtual team. And nothing was working. And finally, I realized that it was because I was trying to tweak around the edges and I was trying to play with these symptoms. Um, and actually, what finally worked was when I realized that what I needed to do was model the behavior that I wanted to see. So when I started showing up differently, people responded to that in kind. And then that, in turn, is what changed the culture. So it sounds incredibly cheesy, but it really did start with me. So I think that when you're looking to change a culture, you really do have to start from you and think hard about what is the behavior that I am modeling. Um, and then people will respond when you behave in a different way. I think that people feel comfortable uh, being themselves, um, that people behave consistently if you're in the office as opposed to if you're out of the office. It doesn't feel like they put on this costume or really this armor, um, which again was what it had ended up being on that particular team, that I would you know, walk into these team meetings and I had to really feel like I was putting on my suit and I was gearing up for battle. And then luckily when I walked out at the end of the day, I could shed that and relax and be myself. Um, so I think that when you're in a good organization, when you're in a healthy place, people can, can be themselves. Um, so that's what that that's what that feels like. I don't quite know what it looks like. I don't know if it's really visible, um, but you definitely know what it feels like. I've read a lot about this, and I read an article recently that what really resonated with me was that people wanted uh, purpose and autonomy. So purpose for people to feel like they were part of something um, that was going to have an impact in the world. So for example, um, and, and that was framed in that way. So I worked for, I worked for an oil company. Uh, and actually the way that we talked about our purpose was that we were about bringing heat, light, and mobility to people around the world. And I know that, that can sound a little bit cheesy, but it actually did help frame um, what we were doing. And it helped us think, OK, well, th if this is our end goal, our goal is to deliver heat, light, and mobility. And if we, if we do that well, then yeah, shareholders will reward us, and governments will give us contracts. Um, but it did give a sense of purpose. I think part of what happened with the financial crisis and part of why um, companies you know, go down in flames for reasons that are, that are unethical is that people have lost sight of the purpose, that companies um, don't actually exist to make money. If they do, that's when they fail, because people lose sight of why they're there. And they really need to have a sense of purpose. Uh, and then the second thing is autonomy. So once it's clear what that purpose is, people will be drawn to that purpose. That's why they're in the organization. And once they're there, they want to be given autonomy to go ahead and accomplish that. Nobody really wants to be micromanaged and supervised to the point where you don't feel like you have any space and you're very constrained, or else why, you, know, you can hire a robot to do that, right? So purpose and autonomy. So I am a real stickler for performance contracts, even with really small organizations. I had one friend who was starting up something on her own. She finally got some, she, she got some funding to hire an intern. And um, I was advising her to, to actually set out a performance contract for this very reason, that people need to know what is expected of them. Um, so just spelling out at a pretty high level the three or four things that that person is supposed to accomplish. Now, once you have those down on paper, then you can work out lots of different ways of achieving those. Some people like weekly check-ins. Some people like um, you know, weekly check-in in person. Some people like email updates once a week that have a very structured format. Some people like um, sub-bullet points for each of their uh, you know, three or four big picture goals with dates next to those. And some people don't. But I think that, first of all, agreeing those three or four big goals, no matter what working style you have, 
is really important. And when I have failed in jobs, it's because we haven't been clear enough about what was expected of me. Um, because if you don't know what's expected of you, then, then you know, how on earth are you going to achieve it? Um, so I'm very much a stickler about spelling out your goals. And then um, once you start on a job, checking in pretty frequently about how it's going. What do you need from me? What do I need from you? And then you know that might be, again, once a week or even once a day, depending on the nature of the project. And then those can get less and less frequent over time. Um, but, but I think being clear about goals up front is really important. This is a little bit gimmicky, but for me it's really worked. So one friend said, um, OK, do this. Take a piece of paper and draw an x-axis, uh, an x-axis and a y-axis. And the, uh, the y-axis is important, so true priorities. And the x-axis is what is urgent, so the time things. And then don't just do a linear to-do list. When you have a to-do list, put things in the quadrant in which they belong. And then in the top right quadrant, you will have the things that are important and urgent. And then um, fold the paper horizontally first. So if you've got the things that are truly important, that those are the only things that you can see. And then fold the left side under so that you've got the important and urgent things. And then see if you can you know, tackle some of those. And then once you've done as many of those that you can do, un unfold the left side so that you're still only looking at the things that are truly important. And then if you have time or if you're getting really tired and you think, OK, let me just you know, knock off a couple other things, then you can look at the bottom half or just look at that bottom right quadrant. Again, it's gimmicky, but for me, it's really worked to try to parse out, OK, what is really important and what really doesn't have to be done now? Because we all know when you have a to-do list, it is so easy to just do the things that are easy, and particularly the things that are easy and urgent. And you never get to the stuff that is important but not urgent. But that's the stuff you really need to focus on. And, and in particular for me, um, I try to do those things first thing in the morning. Uh, and for me also, the tip is not to open my email, which is really hard. Um, but I'll try to look at my email when I'm like feeding my kids or something and I'm not just so that I know if there was anything really urgent and I've, I've gotten it off my mind to check my email. But then when I really sit down first thing in the morning and I'm ready to go, I don't open my email. I just have that to-do list and I look at the things that are important. Reach out beyond um, your own circle of peers and the colleagues who are in or run similar kinds of organizations to yourself because um, you know sometimes we think well I couldn't possibly learn anything from that organization because it's so much bigger or um, it has so much more money or it's in a totally different industry uh, or it's um, or it's government uh, but I think we all have so much to learn from each other and particularly when we're talking about um, recruiting and hiring and retaining staff. Um, there are lessons to be learned and people who have thought about this really hard and they may be in different kinds of contexts. Uh, but I think thinking outside your own um, usual daily box is really important.